Hey everyone, welcome to The Creator Show. This is your host, Ruben Drieger. I am super excited about today's show. We're gonna be talking about a lot of fun stuff that's really important for, especially online entrepreneurs, because, I mean, we, we talk a lot about different things on this show, but most of you guys are online entrepreneurs, so we wanna make it specific and targeted and relevant for you guys. So basically, we have a really special guest on the show here today. Ollie is on the show here. And um, basically, what we're gonna do is what we normally do, which is give yourself a bit of an introduction, like the, the two-minute version of how you became an entrepreneur, your journey, then we'll dive into some really fun stuff and get tactical so that all of our listeners can leave with something that they can practically implement into their businesses today. So give an introduction and uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. Cool. Uh, so yeah, hey guys, hope everyone is well. Uh, my name is Oli, I'm from the UK. Um, I'm 24 years old at the time of recording this. Um, so yeah, a little bit more of a background of me. Um, I've I run a social media marketing agency here in the UK. Um, probably not as typical as some of the other agency owners that you see online. Um, simply because I'm a creative, like I've always been the person that was creating the videos and, you know, designing the logos and stuff like that. I was always a creative person. So um, unlike some people that have got into the agency side of things, just because you know, it's a great model to jump into yeah. for one thing, I'll always, I'll always vouch for the model, but it's also like, I was, I was sort of creating content for people before I sort of knew about the whole agency side of thing. And then you, know, right. you get into, you get into educating yourself more and, and seeing what things, but um, yeah, to, to put you in a bit of a perspective, um, you know, I'm just like a normal sort of, sort of guy. Um, I come from uh, London, of course. So I, you know, went to school, I went to college to, I went to college to do motion graphics and animation. Um, right. which at the time was like exactly what I wanted to do um, coming out of school. And I used to work in a shoe shop, um, my auntie's shoe shop when I was at college. So that was pretty cool. It was just a, sort of like talking to people, you know, that that was a really cool sort of time. Um, I then was in my last year of college. It was only two years and I just quit college simply because <laughs> my, uh, simply because my cousin worked in central London as an accountant. And he basically phoned me up and was like, look, there's a, there's a job role, uh, within finance. I got an E in, in, uh, maths GCSE as well, by the way. Oh, okay. just, uh, yeah. I got an E in maths. So I wasn't, I wasn't good at maths whatsoever. Um, but yeah, long story short, I, I went for this interview. Um, I wasn't qualified for this job whatsoever, um, but I managed to get the job. Um, I like to say it's like, it's who you know, not what you know. Um, so yeah, managed to get that job, obviously being referred from my cousin. I ended up staying at that job for two to three years. That was within credit control. So um, okay. a lot of the time, um, if you know, if you don't know what credit control is, essentially you're ringing people that owe you money. So um it was one of those things. It was a numbers game. So it's very much so like, look, you've got to get X amount in for the company per month. So, you know, it was very much so you had to reverse engineer right. of this person owes us X amount. This post person owes us X amount. And it was, it was essentially like what you do for outreach with a, with an agency. Um, right. But the, the money's guaranteed. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get a lot of people ducking and diving. So from there, I got very big into the gym. I used to play football when I was younger, but I was never like actively um, like in the gym. It was sort of like I would go to football training and that was my thing. So when I started working in central London, everyone was like, oh, like, let's go out for drinks at lunch. Let's, um, let's go out for drinks after work. And I'm not really a big drinker. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get myself into the gym. Um, I got myself into the gym. I was then training like on my lunch breaks every single day and it became a scary obsession. Um, I then, I then slowly realized that I wanted to be a personal trainer. So I, I signed up to like a course to get my personal training qualification. And that essentially made my attention shift from going to the gym to learning about the gym. Mm. Uh, so for the next year or so, I spent a lot of time, like I wasn't training on my lunch break. I was, I was, uh, I was like studying on my lunch break and then I was staying after work to then train at the gym. And you know, that sort of time just became very, very hectic because I was obviously working full time and then I was studying to be a personal trainer. Um, and then as soon as I got my qualification, I literally handed my notice in because for me, like I knew I had this qualification. I knew I wanted to work in the gym. I didn't know right. where I wanted to work in a gym. I didn't, you know, I just knew, and I knew that job role wasn't for me. It wasn't something I was good at it. Don't get me wrong. And I enjoyed right. 
I enjoyed it now looking back at it, but it was always, it was never, you know, it was, wasn't what I wanted to do. I just sort of fell into that role. Um, and then from there, like funny, it's actually a funny story. Um, when I got my qualification, obviously handing my notice and I, you know, I don't know how it works over in the, in the U S but you usually have like a, like a notice period for your job. So I had like a 30 day notice period. So I still had right. to go in after I've handed my notice, mm-hmm. bear in mind, I've not got a job. So then I would, um, I lined up a few interviews for gyms. I would call in sick on my 30 days notice. So they're obviously like, <laughs> they know what you're doing. Um, call in, call in sick, go to these jobs and stuff like that. And I actually went to a job interview and there was like 60 people there and bear in mind, wow. you can get, you can get, um, you get two qualifications with like being a PT, you get, um, you get like a level two fitness instructor, which mm-hmm. is like, you can, you can like work in a gym, you can do it, but you can't physically train people. Like you can do classes, but you can't one-on-one personal train people. So I only had that qualification and I've gone into this uh, place. Bear in mind, this, this place was like two hour journey away from my house as well. So thinking of it now, there's like absolutely no way, even if I was to get picked out of those 60 people, it would have been mm-hmm. a, a very big mistake for me to right. take. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cut a long story short, I was going through these interviews and then I actually come home to like where I live um, on one of these days where I'd, where I'd had an interview, which was like two hours away. And I've gone to my local um, like shopping center, or whatever you call it. And um, there, was a, there was an Anytime Fitness store up and they basically had um, that they was, they was, you know, opening a new Anytime Fitness. And it was on the day I'd called in sick to go for this other job interview. And I literally just walked up to the guy and I was like, look, I've been for a job interview for in a gym today. Like, mm-hmm. I just wanted to know, have you got any, jo- uh, any jobs going? And um, straight away he was like, yeah, he was like, we've got a job. Um, we got a job that's going, but we need someone to start next week. And I was like, okay, like I can, I was like, well, I've got a 30 day calling off like 30 day period at work. Um, but I was like, if you can guarantee me a job, like I'll, I just won't go back. Like mm. the worst that's going to happen is they're not going to pay me for that time, which I wasn't really bothered about. Totally. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I got the, I got like an interview and then like within a couple of days, they had offered me a job and I can honestly say at, you know, I can honestly say like at this moment in my life, it, it was a job that I could have retired in. And that's also it's, that was also the scary point for me, obviously only right. being, only being like 22 years old. And I, I, you know, I loved my job and I obviously went from working a corporate job to then go into working in a gym. Right. Um, but for me, there was no elevation. There was no, there was no room for growth. So um, I was always freelancing, doing video editing and uh, video production and stuff like that. And um, when I was working at any time, I also um, started online so like looking for clients online and i actually Mm -hmm. i actually landed my first online client while i was working there still um and i was just doing that in my spare time so Mm -hmm. for me to be able to say like i think my first client was like 400 dollars a month um, which was amazing like i was like totally and i and she was from new york as well so even like for me to say to like my not like it's, it's not like that but you know like even when people ask you, oh, like, so who's this new client? I'm like, yes, uh, this person from New York. And they're like, what? what? So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. like, yeah. So, like, yeah, that was, but that also like broke a lot of limiting beliefs to me as well. It was like, look, like this person's paying me $400 a month to do this. Like, it, it only takes me a couple of hours. And I was doing right. it while still working full time. Um, and yeah, it just got to a point where I absolutely loved the gym. Um, there was a couple of things with the franchisees and stuff um, that wasn't necessarily working in my favor. I wasn't mm. necessarily getting the recognition that I should have should have been getting. Um, right. And not in like a bitter or a twisted way, but it was just sort of like, okay, I'm I'm busting my ass, you know, all day, every day, and right. other people aren't doing it, and the owners aren't there to see it. And it was just sort of like, if I was doing this for myself, imagine where I'd be. So I just took the, I just took the leap and that was about two years ago now. And I haven't really ever looked back. Yeah, totally. No, that's awesome. And I want to, want to dive in on kind of that leap because I think a lot of, of, especially the people that are listening to this, a lot of them are in the process of either they are leaping right now from something that is quote unquote stable (laughs) and they're trying to move into an entrepreneurship realm. And so basically, I mean, you went through that already, 
maybe, maybe what are some takeaways of like, <laughs> maybe it's like how to get over the fear of it or how to, how to like really like rock and roll with your new venture and like not look back. What are some takeaways for some people who are either, either thinking of making that leap or are in the process and maybe they're, they're a little bit freaked out right now? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the main thing I'd like to firstly point out, obviously maybe not so with this whole coro uh, corona sort of thing yeah. going on at the moment, relevant to say, but I think it's still necessary, like it's still proven at this moment in time. And I'll actually tell you why after. Um, and that's the nine to five is not going anywhere. Mm. Like no matter what you do, the nine to five is not going anywhere. There will always be some, and the people that come to me and they say, oh, like I can't get a job. I can't like, you can get a job. Go, yeah. go, go get that job. Like you can, totally. if I, you can, if you go out, you put yourself out there, you can get a job. Um, and funny enough, like we, we come back from traveling, we was traveling for three months and my other half, she literally just got a new job role. Mm -hmm. Um, she's an accountant and she, you know, and obviously all of the offices, they're not even in the offices at the moment. They sent all of the gear to her house and she's now working remotely. She's not even been in their office as of yet. So right. that, like, so that, so that in itself is like, look, the nine to five is not going anywhere. Like you can literally, you can literally get those sort of roles. Not like that. Obviously it takes some hard work, but for sure, um, you know, yeah, no matter. So the, the main point I'm trying to get to is like, if you quit your job and you go full stack in what you want to do, like mm. you'll probably always still get a job. Right. What you're doing. So my, yeah, my, I mean, my main thing would be if you're working in a job role that you don't like, then that's, that's the incentive to get out of it straight away is like, mm. you know, me as well. It's like, if I was working in a job that I hated and that, that's why it was hard for me as well, because I genuinely enjoyed the job role I was right. in. For so sure. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, I was, it wasn't like I had that sort of thing where it's like, I need to get out of my nine to five. And that's what sort of drove me towards it. Um, it was in my first role when I worked in central London, I was like, look, I want to be a personal trainer. And for that, I just quit and I went for it. Um, but in terms of like leaving your business to start your own, mm. your own business or your entrepreneurship, one thing I would say is don't be afraid to then go get another job. Yeah. Yeah, so, totally. Like, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff where like for me like and i'm even thinking of doing it now because i'm seriously lacking routine at the moment and that's one thing that you don't get when you work for yourself or you work from home is like you don't have that routine whereas if you are genuinely still working and like you said everyone's got bills and it's not yeah. going to happen overnight so one thing i'd say is like just chuck your pride out of the window in a sense of like you can leave your nine to five monday to friday job and go get a job in a coffee shop for two days a week. As long right. as it, as long as it pays for the necessar necessity stuff that you've got, That's but then you've also got four days or, you know, um, you got five days spare to then work on your business, but it's also going to keep you in that routine. And of course, pay the yeah. bills. No, that's good. And I think, I think a couple of takeaways there for everyone that's listening or watching this on YouTube is that you always can have a fallback, right? And basically if worse comes to worse and your, your push at your business doesn't work out as much as you want it or doesn't work out at all. I mean, I know when I started my businesses, I had four that failed before I ever had one that succeeded. Um, there's always, you can find a job and it's so true. Like I remember actually when I was in a season of like trying side, side hustles and jobs at the same time whenever i really really want to get a job and push for it i usually could get a job within a week or two um and and it and it yeah it took me like calling a lot of people talking to a lot of people emailing a lot of people but it happened and so i think that's really good and then i think the second thing and i i, I really like this and one of my mentors once told me he said ruin basically if the worst case is not a mortality event then go for it which basically means like if, if you go for your business and if the worst case actually is like a mortality event, basically like you go bankrupt and something like that, then don't do it. But if the worst case is not a mortality event, so basically like say getting another job, then you should totally go for it, right? Get over that fear. Um, and so, no, I think that's really good. I think that's a really good tip because I think a lot of people, and actually my wife and I have talked about this a lot. If, if you always talk about what the, lots of people who are very positive, like myself naturally, um, when we don't, when we basically don't think about the worst case and we're always just thinking about the positive, when something bad happens, then we get thrown off. But if you plan like, Hey, this is what the worst case could be. This is what we're, we're obviously not 
pushing for the worst case, but if this is the worst case, then you have the right expectation of like actually understanding the game plans or contingency plans. And, and one thing just to really jump on that as well is like, if I could tell myself, um, you know, if I could tell myself a few years ago mm. is like, I know I just said, don't be afraid to stay, like to go get another job or whatever. But if you think of it from like an actual like, business owner's point of view, rather than mm -hmm. just someone that's going to service it, right? I wish that when I did leave the nine to five, uh, Monday to Friday job, that I would have gone and found something like three days a week. Um, right. Very right. like, very like minimal, but you know, because as well, like for me sort of looking back is like, okay, if you had something like that and it, it took that time and you've got mm -hmm. that recurring income in coming regardless, this is yeah. like low, this isn't like something that's going to make you miserable, like a coffee shop, like, and as well, that that's going to, that's going to help you with your expertise in owning a business, you know, cause you're going to continuously be speaking to people every single day. You're going to be developing yeah. your customer service skills, which yeah. ideally is, is at the top of any business. Right. Um, but what also that will, that will make you do if you know, for example, you work in a coffee shop three days a week, and of course you can't spend those three days a week working on your business, it's going to force you from the get go to think of it like a business yeah. of, okay, so I can't, I can't work on these three days. Who can I hire to work yeah. on those three days? And what that can basically do is that, that can explode your business and you can stay. So for me, it was always like, I want something that I can actually go and mm -hmm. get another job. And that still runs in the background sort of totally. thing. Totally. Because also like I, me personally, like I look at jobs as um, like opportunities uh, and somewhere to learn something. So for, sure. for me, like, even though I've got uh, online businesses and I've got, you know, stuff that, you know, foundations that I've set up, that's going to bring me in recurring monthly revenue, regardless of if I'm physically there every day, but that what that also allows me to then do is to say, okay, cause I'm still young as well. Right. And it's like, I don't necessarily have my next 40 years planned out. I don't necessarily know what I'm into and, you know, swings and roundabouts Like I was big into fitness. And then once I was into fitness, I was like, okay, now I want my own business from it. So yeah. what that also says to me is like, okay, in a year's time, like I might see a job role for like a, like a video production manager or something like that. And for me, it's like, cool. Like, why not? Why not go and get into this role? I'm going to learn from the right. people that I'm with. And obviously like all of this stuff, like I said, if you build something and you actually build it as a business, you're not trying to be a freelancer. Right. Of course, if you're a freelancer, then yeah, you're going to have to be at your desk grinding 10 hours a day to get that income. But if you think of it of a, a long-term business, then of course you're going to have to hire people to do those tasks regardless. So that was always what I wanted to do. I always wanted to have something that would run on autopilot and I could still go out and do these other things and learn other topics as well. No, I love that. I think that's good. And I, I think that's a, that's a good balance because I, um, in, in kind of the space we're in, there's oftentimes like people who they're not putting enough effort into building their side hustles that they really want to do or whatever it is. And then we have people that go so fully in that there are those mortality events. And this is kind of having like a nice like balance, like basically I would call it smart risk, right? Smart risk and yeah. in, in, in basically, yeah, taking risk and going after what you want, but being smart about that. So I think that's a really good takeaway. Now, I know before we started recording all of that, one of the things that you wanted to maybe kind of dive in or you were kind of excited to talk about was content and creating content and some different things like that. So basically, I know you've had a lot of experience in this. So maybe let's start with a couple of things that you see a lot of new entrepreneurs doing with content that they shouldn't be doing and maybe just giving a couple tips on how to correct it. So let's dive into that and then we can jam on that for a bit. Okay, cool. Um, so I always think when it comes down to content and obviously like, like I previously mentioned, you know, I've created content for myself, uh, I've created content for clients. Um, I have loads of people that just come to me, even like friends and, you know, that create content, whether it's for their side hustles, what you're talking about, or like, even if it's just general advice. And the main thing that I've sort of realized is there's, when it comes to selling stuff online, there's three things that you need, right? And that is for the person to like you, to know you and mm. to trust you like yeah. no trust. And it's, a, we almost call it like the, the trust hump. Um, right. This is like a trust hump, right? So it's like not necessarily what people are doing wrong, but how they can sort of approach it in a better way is like, Pressure. 
all you need to think about really when you're creating content is who is my ideal customer and does this piece of content help them like know and trust me more um and really like it, it sounds stupid to say but if you like i've got a big whiteboard so when i plan content i literally try and keep it to a point of look this is my like content. This is what's going to help people like me better. This is my no uh, content. This is what's going to help uh, my audience know me better. And then it's like trust content. This is the content that's going to help me trust me better. So really it's, it's like not overcomplicating it is mm-hmm. like actually sticking to like a strategy and like a content plan. I know it's hard as well when you think about it, but Totally. If you, if you simplify it into those three things, it's like, okay, there's so much content you can do, but try and keep them within those barriers. So to get people to like me more, it might be, okay, it's just like a picture of me working and I'm talking about um, like a personal story of mine to get people to know me a bit more. It's, you know, I'm actually deep, I'm uh, deep diving into like Ollie, who is Ollie? Like what the, what the people not know about me that would right. benefit from them and it's also like the trust the trust is like testimonials are great for that if i can get a video of someone saying you know oh, i worked with ollie and he helped me achieve x of course when someone sees that they're going to trust me a lot more so yeah. but when it comes to creating content it is really just i know it goes to like the whole gary v so side of things as well mm-hmm. as like documenting over creating that's something that i as a creator struggled with a lot um right. I was always like, like, like me and Ruben was talking about before, and I'm sure we get onto this is like, I'm a big, like tech person. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm like known within like my friendship group of like, if like a, a new camera comes out, they'd be like, I'll get a text like, Oh, you got that new camera, didn't you? And I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> or like, um, just stuff like that. Like, like I was always that person with the, with the, the new killer, like the camera, but it was always, always like my friends that like, would be younger, like, and I'd be saving up 500 pounds to buy a camera and they'd be like, what are you like? What are you doing? Like, why, like what are you doing? Like, yeah. so yeah, that was always me, but also that was always like my biggest flaw because it sort of took me away from actually producing content. Cause it was right. always like, it was like, okay, so like, to create YouTube videos, I need well, there's cameras over there, but it was like, Oh, I need, uh, I need a DSLR. So I was like, okay, my main focus was on, okay, how do I get that DSLR? Whereas, Right. The day we're living, the day and age we're living in at the moment is like you can produce everything. You can produce client work with this bad boy if you wanted right. to. Like it's 4K. Um, and that that'd be my biggest tip is just like get started. Just start creating content, no matter what resources you have available to you. And guys, if you if you guys are watching this right now, you have the resources available. So yeah, it would just be documenting over creating as well. Um, like that. That's the biggest point. Because also, if you get into documenting stuff, it's going to be so much easier to them like repurpose content. And this is a great example of it. This is right. a strategy that I use on my podcast. I get people onto onto uh, an episode exactly like this, and what that basically then gives me is a thirty to forty minute episode that I can then repurpose, chop up into one minute clips. So yeah, it's just being strategic with it. I hope I've been on. a went on a bit of a tangent then but no, that's good um, that's good I, yeah, I like that so and that's that's i think i think the main takeaways is yeah like if everyone listening to this look at your last week of content and mm-hmm. and actually say like did this the, did this post either get people to know me like <laughs> me or trust me more and the more yeses you have for your content the better if there if there's less of them maybe start to analyze and see how you can change it up i think that's those are really good tips um, I do want to ask one other question about content. Then I do want to, yeah, maybe dive into tech a little bit. So, yeah, but, sorry. What, what, sorry. One thing while we're on there as well, yeah. it's like a key, key takeaway that I've noticed in the, in the last sort of thing is like my biggest thing at the moment, I, I started a YouTube channel and it was purely to document my life. Like I, I won't ever fall, fall back from that. That is why I created it. Um, however, I, you know, and I, I, when I started it, it was never to grow it, right? It was never, right. it was never like, okay, I want to start a YouTube channel. I want to get a hundred thousand subscribers. It was just, you know, this is what I enjoy doing. I enjoy creating videos and I want to document my life. And I still watch these older videos from like three, four years ago. And yeah. for me, that's priceless. And for me, for me to be able to look back at that when I'm like 80 years old of me, like traveling like with my girlfriend and stuff, that's going to be amazing. No matter how many subscribers I've got at that point. Right. Um, but the main, the main takeaway I wanted to say from that bit is like 
find a platform that you want to you want to dominate right so right. me for me at the minute is youtube and the way that i'm now changing up my content is like I still want to create the vloggy content. I still want to create the behind the scenes and the travel stuff, but to grow on these platforms, you've got to speak to your ideal audience. You've got to be literally when you turn that camera on, hello, you've got to imagine like you are speaking directly to your ideal customer and that's yeah. what's really going to help you. And that's why searchable content for me on YouTube is of course going to help me um, get more subscribers, get more comments, get more whatever because that's what people are genuinely searching for rather than no one's searching for Ollie Fault vlog or, totally. you know, do you know what I mean? So, but also what that's allowed me to do is create that as the top of the funnel. And like I said before, I'm now solely focusing on YouTube so much that everything that I put on YouTube, I'm then going to be repurposing that content onto Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, oh, where, wherever you're at. So yeah, it's just sort of like, don't, and I know like you're like big into Facebook. Facebook's another big one for me, but, it's like, don't think that if you're coming into this game, you need to be like, okay, I need to post three times on Facebook. I need to post three times right. on Instagram. I need to post three YouTube videos a day. It's sort of like master one of them and then I like that. and repurpose the content onto other platforms. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask because I think a lot of people, they struggle with, um, I mean, even repurposing content on the same platform. Um, oh, something yeah. and and that's the one thing I wanted to ask which is like a lot of new entrepreneurs though they'll hear advice from people being like you should be everywhere on every social media platform but what's your and like I love you said focus on one and then yeah you can it, it's very simple and time efficient to maybe repurpose on other contents but where should people start as far as repurposing or <clears throat> and as they grow their businesses should they grow how much they <laughs> repurpose, etc um like I said, for me, the, the main platform is YouTube. So I have three main things that I sort of talk about on my YouTube channel. And that is essentially the three main three things that like Ollie Falk, or if you, if you like, as the brand talks about. So mm -hmm. for me, I have, um, I have like a, I have a tutorial video that goes up every week. So I like to put free videos up a week on YouTube. So mm -hmm. I have a podcast, I have the tutorial videos, and then I have like a vloggy sort of video as well. Right. And what that allows me to do is basically speak to each three of the people. It's like, it's, it's almost like you have a video that's going to gain subscribers, like searchable content. I have a video that's like talking to my existing subscribers. So right. people, that people that initially followed me for like the vloggy type of videos aren't necessarily going to be interested in um, like how to record a podcast on Zoom, which is like yeah. one of the videos on my channel that's doing really well at the moment. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I personally would start with YouTube simply because of the, the power of YouTube and, you know, my channel isn't even monetized at the moment, but since I started it and, I, and it goes back to me saying like, I didn't create my YouTube to make money, but mm -hmm. since I've, st since I created my YouTube channel, it has been making me money because right. people see the content I create and you know, they see the editing that you're doing. They see um, how you can piece pieces together. Right. And, and like I've had people come through my YouTube channel, even if it's like video editing or video production. Um, right. So that's why I'd always say use YouTube, um, get into, uh, you know, learning about searchable content from the get go. Cause that's something I didn't do. That wasn't my goal back then, but looking at it now, like it should have been. Um, and yeah, when it comes to repurposing content, I always like to do a long form video on YouTube. Uh, try to get like that 10 to 20 minutes, depending on right. like, what you're talking about. And then, yeah, like me personally, like my personal system is like, I have a VA and it's like, I like to do my actual video editing simply because For sure. um, because I have like a certain style of how I edit it and I've split tested that sort of stuff as well. Right. But I, I like to edit the initial video. So the YouTube video. So that's like, that's me. You can tell that I've edited it mm -hmm. and then like a repurposing content. Um, you can get very, I don't know if can I share my screen with this? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's jump. Let's jump. Be. Let's take it one step further. So, um, so yeah, look, I'm in my YouTube analytics right now, right? So there if you, you take my if you take my channel, for example, right, and you click onto my playlist, you'll see that one of the main things is the the podcast that Ruben was on, right? So you've got Design a Future podcast and all of these videos are all of these videos uh, in this playlist are like 
10, no, no, sorry, about 20 to 30, 40 minutes long. But then what I basically do is I've put together a template um, and I've just done this once, right? Yeah. yeah. I've put together a template and put it on for my Instagram. So now if you go into my Instagram, every single one of my recent posts are essentially what I like to call the right. golden nuggets. I like to call it the golden nugget formula. So yeah. these are like the golden nuggets of these long form videos. If you have a little really quick interesting, look. Ollie. Um, I haven't really got any social. So that's just basically how I do it. I, right. I basically have a system within the content creation side of things. My personal brand is like, look, I deal with the YouTube video. Then I teach um, my, my VA what he needs to do for those. And now the system's so clear that when I, when I record a podcast, like what we're doing now, I send it straight over to him. He edits it for me. And part of him editing the video is a requirement of the fact that he goes through and finds the golden nuggets of the podcast. Perfect. episode, yeah. And then he puts together two of those Instagram videos. Yeah. So then, when you talk about stacking that content and, you know, batching up, up the content, it's like, okay, cool. So if I, if I get someone like Ruben on and we, we do a podcast episode, I know that I've got one YouTube video and two, in, two Instagram and Facebook posts from that, right. from that session straight away. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps. No, that's good. I think that's, I think that's really good. Um, and I think, and that's something where a lot of entrepreneurs, I love how you said, focus on when to start, but as you grow and maybe you can hire a VA, you can start to distribute it to different places and it starts to grow your traction channels and all those things. So that's, that's excellent. So I wanted to just ask a little bit about tech and then kind of funnel off to the end of this podcast. This has been great by the way, but so let's talk about maybe some of your favorite tech to use as an entrepreneur. And also, I really, I really like how you said, like you used to focus on the tech in, in basically you did that in detriment to, you could have just been creating more. Right. And yeah. so yes, talk about the cool tech. What, what's some of your favorite stuff, but also maybe talk about how, like, don't wait till it's perfect to post it. Cause I, I don't want people to be like, Oh, I need to get all this tech before I post it. So let's, let's go on those two things. Sure. Yeah. So as I said, I was um, like growing up, I was a big Apple fan. Like I was like, I was a, like a big, big Apple fan growing up. Um, and I briefly mentioned to Ruben before, when I was in secondary school, I actually created a YouTube channel with uh, a friend that was called We Know Mac. And it was before all of like the the Mac tutorials were really a thing. It was like, right. um, you know, we were just doing like desk setup videos. And if you, if you guys are watching this now as well, a guy I was really into was called Soldier Knows Best. Uh, it'd be interesting okay. to look at look at his content because I don't know if, I don't know I don't even know if he's still around. But <laughs> awesome. this is like this is like the the content on YouTube where you, it was like it looked like he was filming it like this, like unboxing <laughs> unboxing a thing. And and like looking back at it now, like if you're if you're into like that sort of tech as well, like for me it's so it's so weird to look back at someone unboxing like the original iPhone. Um, that's awesome. Do you know what I mean? So for me, like I was in that space before I even knew that that was like a thing. So we done that. I was, um, you know, we was doing videos where it was like, God, I look like such a nerd now. <laughs> but when we was at school, like it was like uh, doing like a desk review, um, desk setup video. And like, that's the type of content we done. Cut a long story short, um, we ended up finishing it. Like we would just that we just cancelled the channel, deleted the channel, um, mm -hmm. simply because the guy I was doing it with didn't want to do it. And obviously, at that moment in time, I'm in like year nine. I'm in like year nine at school, so it wasn't me saying like, "Okay, I'm going to step up and I'm going to do it myself," sort of thing. It was just like, "Okay, cool. If you're not going to do it, I'm not going to do it," sort of thing. Totally. So, so with that, like, that's a big, big regret is like that we we uh, we closed that channel because like there's probably millions and millions and millions of YouTube channels that are absolutely killing it, that are doing the exact same thing now. Right. Um, but I'm grateful for, for taking that step as well. So yeah, when it comes to tech, um, like I said, I'm, I'm big into Apple. So I've always been, uh, they always say, once you go Mac, you never go back. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, but I've always been on Mac. So I, I you know, I basically self-taught myself, um, self-taught myself i self-taught yeah my, something like that <laughs> self-taught myself yeah um you know editing on a mac so from the get-go like final cut was a big one for me um but yeah when it comes to um when it comes to tech now i'm very simple i got rid of my desktop um mac simply because 
um, you know, I was creating an online business. I wanted to be able to take, you know, literally pick up my laptop, take it to another country and be able to work from there, which right. I didn't want to, I didn't want to have that restriction of, of getting used to having like this big desktop set up and stuff like that. Like I literally wanted, for sure. um, I wanted a business in a backpack, which I like, which we like to call. Um, so yeah, I, I basically stripped down MacBook pro. That's it. Um, in terms of cameras, um, you might like this. This is um, one of my one of my sort of like day to day cameras. This oh, is the cool. Osmo Osmo Pocket, um, and this slowly became one of my favorite cameras. Um, you know, when I was starting the agency, I was creating a lot of content, which I don't really do for people now. I, you know, like it's all online. Whereas before, right. when I first started it, it was like, okay, local businesses. Well, what local businesses can I work with? Um, and having this at that moment in time, like literally having this in your pocket, like I would walk into a local business and be like, introduce myself, whatever, blah, blah. Like, you know, I create videos for local businesses. Like I'd love to help you guys create a promotional video or something right. along those lines. Um, and they'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Like if you come back and like bring all your equipment or whatever, like that sort of conversation. And I'd be like, no, no, no I've got my camera here. And they'd be like, what, what? And even this is like, even this is like a talking point because right. like, if you're if you're like walking down the street and you're holding this, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before, but it's I like haven't actually. That's interesting. Really, really, really cool. Like this became my main camera for shooting any type of content, right? Um, because it's got a built-in gimbal as well, so the the footage looks so steady compared to if you've got as you can see, like I've got like a DSLR. Yeah, totally. You can see from here, so a DSLR, it would look shaky as anything compared to this, and also like when you walk into somewhere and you pull this out, like most people will be like, what is that? Like to this day as well. And these aren't, these aren't really new anymore. Um, right. So it's a good talking point straight away. So, um, so yeah, that's like, and that's how I, I think I got like free clients from literally doing that. Just walking in there, having that's this perfect. in my, having this in my hand and, and they're just like, like, what's that? What's that? And then you get talking to them. I'm like, Oh yeah, I create videos, blah, blah. And they're like, Oh, what videos do you create? Obviously with your phone as well. You'd be like, Oh yeah, I created this video for, this person down there and like boom 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 you could get a couple of clients straight away so yeah um but yeah it does go back to the fact of like you don't need all of these crazy stuff it's like uh, i i i i got big into like drones and stuff like that just over youtube and i went right. and bought funny story actually <laughs> As, oh there you go <laughs> yeah i bought a drone obviously i think since i've had the drone i've probably used it under 10 times over three or four years, um, right. taking it to different countries and stuff like that. Um, and that was me. Like I was just like, okay, I want to be a YouTuber. I've got to have a, I've got to have a drone. Of course. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So you, you put these sort of things in your head right. and it's like, okay, but that didn't bring me any closer mm -hmm. to it. And it's like, okay, whenever I actually used a drone and you need to think about that with the, the camera side of things, if you want to create content and then you spend two months, saving up or something to buy a camera and then you get the camera and you're like shit what do i do now you know i would just suggest starting with your phone the main thing is like audio to be honest with you because your your phone quality like most people that's watching this their phone quality will be 4k so they've got that out the window yeah. straight away so the main thing would be like audio quality if you're going to do anything if you've just got your phone invest into a mic and then use that setup and then reinvest into mm. other cameras and stuff like that that's perfect perfect no i love it and um i think i think that's that's so good because i think a lot of people they want to start perfect but i think just i mean the iphones are great the video quality is great on them already yeah. and so start there slowly upgrade whether it's audio maybe cameras like that so no i think that's perfect and then i know you, i see you have a ring light in the background we have one as well for yeah, yeah, yeah. when you want to have good lighting and stuff like that so that's perfect so yeah but sorry and as well just to say this is a this is a very very good example and i yeah can i do it yeah look this is a great example this is just sorry for you guys that are watching oh. this and gonna get hurt. <laughs> but this is just a desk lamp right that i've got behind yeah. behind me right now right yes i've got the ring light and i could put the ring light there but that's also exactly what we're talking about is like look you haven't got to go and buy a ring light you can use your oh, totally. do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. like that that's a great example that you sort of pointed out um, i i agree i agree so yeah. need it yeah no and, and that's the thing like ring lights are great but there's a lot of natural light that can be can be great as well it can be lights that you have in your house so no i think that's perfect so 
Okay. Well, this is, I think it's been very helpful on a, just a practical level for a lot of people. So Ollie, thanks for, thanks for being on. Um, where can people, I mean, I think your main thing is YouTube. So what's the, what's the name of your channel so people can go check your stuff out? Cool. Yeah. So firstly, obviously, thank you for having me, having me on. Hopefully yeah. uh, we uh, dropped some value for the guys. Um, yeah. So my channel is all around um, digital marketing, making money online and video editing, um, looking to streamline, obviously everyone's online businesses. You can find it. It's just uh, my name. So it's O L L E Y spell it a little bit differently. Ollie. Mm -hmm. And then it's Thorpe like the park. So T H O R P E. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, guys, go give his channel, subscribe. It got some really good stuff on there. So, um, anyways, this has been great. Thanks for being on and, uh, we'll be, uh, yeah, seeing you guys in the next little bit, but if you guys enjoy this episode, make sure you can share it. Um, um, Instagram stories is the best place. Um, and is, what's your Instagram, Ollie? Is it just Ollie Thorpe as well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of my, like all of my personal stuff is just literally my name. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So if you guys want to tag me and Ollie on Instagram on the stories, if you guys would like, uh, that'd mean the world to us and just getting, yeah, just some of the simple stuff out for entrepreneurs who are starting, who just need some of these basic tools, principles, strategies. So anyways, we'll see you guys on the next show and have a great rest of your day. Bye for now, guys. Peace.